Good evening, New Hope family and friends, and greetings from the Kozak family. We're so happy to be with you here this evening worshiping with you. We know that Zoom is not like meeting face to face, but it is a great alternative and we're so happy for that technology. We look forward to seeing you in person in our new church home very soon. We are anxious, as I'm sure you all are, to watch the development of our new property. What a day that will be when we can all meet in our new church home. For now, know that you matter in more ways than we can count. We, we love, love you, you, we love, love you, we love, love you, God and God bless. bless.
church family. I would like to share Romans chapter 8 verses 22 through 27. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. As a pastor, I find that I am spending more time with people who are dealing with anxiety, exhaustion, uncertainty, depression. It's as if the ramifications of 2020 have left people in a space in which they're just not sure of things. And so the pastoral care for many pastors has totally increased. I get it and I understand. Because even as things go back to normal, let's face it, things will never be the normal that we have known. We will create new normals. And in creating new normals, we still have to come together in community and support one another. It's very important. I know for sure, or I believe, that healing is possible. And the road to healing is to acknowledge present moments of pain while we advocate for a better day. We have to acknowledge present moments of pain. We have to acknowledge the turmoil. We have to acknowledge our stress. And we have to believe that hope is on the horizon. We have to believe that hope will not quit. We have to believe that our faith really matters in times of stress and struggle. Pain is a part of the DNA of hope. And oftentimes, the pathway of hope is that we have a testimony of struggle. That's what we have to believe and know. Paul wanted the community in Rome to know and understand that while hope lies ahead and hope does not lose its power, that we have to have hope in the midst of the bad, the uncertain, the ugly, the hate, because hope is what propels us to continue to advocate for a better day. I've kind of said the same thing in three different ways because I'm passionate about the You Matter moment and the You Matter movement that meets people right in the midst of their struggle and says we will lock arms and get through hell together believing that our destiny is a heavenly one and that the kingdom of God still comes down and we are still renewed and we are still redeemed while we advocate for better days. Paul's passion was to encourage and to assure a hurting and desolate people that God knows and God understands that it hurts right now. That God sent a savior to redeem the world and the weak and to give the weary soul spirit and to fulfill the promises of salvation. God did that for us and God sent us the Holy Spirit to remind us that hope will always have the final say. And in your life and in my life and in our life in Christ, we have to have and we have to let hope have the final say. And no one should be able to take that from us and particularly not the world and not the media. While we face some uncertainties, we can be certain that God is still watching over us. You know, we used to sing a song in my grandma's church that really reflects the passion and the care of Paul's message. 
People would come to church burdened by life, burdened in the present moment. And in that community of singing and praise, of gathering in together, the burdens would transcend to a place of hope and rest and peace and assurance so that we could face the days ahead. Oftentimes it was during the praise and worship that somebody would start to sing. Somebody would sing a song like, hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer everything is gonna be all right as the music swelled up the spirit lifted us up and others would join in on the refrain and what i think we need is grandma's church to wrap his arms around us. We need a message like Paul's to give us to assurance so that when, 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 we, when we face those things that don't taste good, we will not fall into despair. Okay, so I know things are hard right now. I know you're trying to make ends meet right now. I see you, we see you. We're entering into the anniversary now of people who died in 2020 due to COVID. It hurts, grief is real, and things are not the same. I know hate is going round and we've got a ways to go, but in grandma's church, that's when that second phrase or refrain would come in and somebody would take it up and begin to sing, pray on just a little while longer. Come on, pray on just a little while longer. Pray on just a little while longer because everything is going to be all right. That's not wishing on a star. That's leaning on the everlasting arm. That's believing beyond disbelief. That's holding on to the promise that has not failed us yet. I need you to hold on because what this song and what Paul's message acknowledge is that the reality of suffering must be acknowledged while we insist that hope has the final say. You know, what Paul expressed was that right while we're dealing with stuff, we can abound in the freedom of expectation. Don't you know the church is the watering hole, the gathering place for your restoration, for my renewal, so that we can journey together in assurance and we can face now in a way that nothing compares. Whatever we face right now does not compare to the glory that is to come. And that's why we pray together and cry together and journey together and continue to walk together and rejoice anyhow together because hope must have the final say. We might come in weak, but God strengthens us to go out strong. Paul says the spirit meets us in this weakness and gives us strength to climb. And it's this spirit that intercedes on our, beh our behalf like an advocate of God's compassion. And that's why we can celebrate the power of and, 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 the, and, and the expression of Pentecost. Because even when we're not doing well, the spirit is beside us groaning on our behalf, engaging in the healing and redemption of Jesus Christ. It's the cry of the slave and it's the voice of our brothers who have been shot down in the street. And hope has to have the final say as we advocate for justice. And the moment that we get tired, and this is this scripture paraphrased, in a way that I want to give to you tonight so that you too will stay encouraged and we will stay together in the good fight. 
while we might have to stir up some good trouble on a really bad day, God is going to give us the strength and the hope and the spirit will swell up in us because the ancestors still sing that song for you and for me. The moment that we get tired and waiting, God's spirit is right alongside us, locking arms with us. God's spirit is saying, I'll lift you out of the valley of death and put you on the mountain high. The spirit is groaning when we cry. The spirit is saying, I am with you. I will cry when you can't cry no more. I will bear your burdens when your back feels broken and beaten. If you don't know how to pray, I'll pray for you. The spirit says, I'm your friend. The spirit is your advocate. The spirit is your hope. The spirit is the marrow in your bones that still gets stirred up to Take the time to continue to walk the lonely path, believing that there is a destiny that leads to our victory and our freedom and justice for all. And the spirit knows us far better than we know ourselves. The spirit knows our condition. And that's why we can be sure that every detail in our lives, every bit of love, that, that we have, God is working it out. God is working things out for the good. So I'm going to ask you to join me in this watering hole moment, in this gathering place moment where we believe and know, or strive to believe and know that hope will have the final say and that the spirit will live in us and it may light a fire of anticipation and rejuvenation within our bones. Trust, believe, and know that God is with us, that Jesus died for the sins of the world, and the Spirit is interceding to ensure that our troubles will not last always, and that we can live in freedom, we can live in hope, we can live in peace, and we can lock arms with one another and say, Everything, everything, everything is going to be all right. Walk in this light and may this good news fill you with peace. God bless you. Greetings at New Hope Presbyterian Church. We know that there are three things that you should remember. God is good. His word is true. Stay close to him and he will bring you through whatever you're going through. I said this because when you give back to supporting the church, blessings are abundant. This may be done in three ways. One, online at www.mynewhopepress.org. Two, mailing in your contribution to P.O. Box 2158, Anaheim, California, 92814. Or you may call the church office and make arrangements to drop it off at area code 714-288-9986. Thank you for, for supporting New Hope Presbyterian Church in Anaheim, California. Greetings and goodbye.
Good evening, New Hope family and friends. It's me bringing you your New Hope Presbyterian Church weekly announcements. We've been back for a few weeks now, but we haven't seen you. Where have you been on Tuesday nights? You're supposed to be hanging out with us on the Holy Hangout. That's right, the Holy Hangout on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Now, this Tuesday's coming up. You get your ministry and community e-news newsletters on Monday. So you'll be able to click that link and come to the Holy Hangout. And then on Thursday, you'll go back to that same newsletter, click the link for Thursday night, and join us for the prayer gathering. That's right. Join us in corporate prayer as we gather together to pray for the prayer requests that have come into the church and for each other, for our families, for our state, for our nation, and for our world. There's something to be said when we can all come together and pray together. Can you tarry one hour? I think I can. So I'll see you at the prayer gathering on Thursday nights at 6 p.m. On Saturday, June 5th, we'll have our next congregational meeting. Make sure that you grab you something to drink and a little snack after service, and then come on back and join us for our congregational meeting at 6 p.m. That link is also in your e-news newsletter. On Saturday, July 10th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., we, your worship committee, are inviting you, the ministry leaders of our church. Hmm. Want to know if you're a ministry leader or not? Are you in charge of making sure that your ministry is functioning, is growing, has members, is participating in all that New Hope can be? Then we need you at this ministry leaders meeting. It is so important for us to continue our grant proposal and finish it up with a bang and make sure that Calvin Institute knows that New Hope Presbyterian Church makes worship a way of life. So ministry leaders, please join us. We want to be able to share with each other. We want to be able to get insight from each other. We want to be able to encourage each other to continue to be ministry leaders and to show the worship of Christ is your way of life. So join us on Saturday, July 10th, mark it on your calendar, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. You'll be receiving an email from us shortly with a short survey just so we can see if we can get some topics for our ministry leaders meeting. I look forward to seeing you there. So remember to like us and subscribe and share this New Hope Presbyterian Church YouTube channel with everyone you know. God bless you, New Hope, and have a wonderful, wonderful week.